On the channel recently, you've had a couple of videos of me just talking a lot about Luminar Neo. So in this one, we're going back to basics. I'm going to be using Luminar AI, and I'm going to be editing this photo sent in by Leanne. Since I started the Anthony Edits Your Photos video series, you guys have sent me a lot of photos, and I really appreciate that. But it's brought to my attention a couple of issues that I keep seeing over and over and again. The first can be solved with a bit of advice, and that is stop shooting your stuff in JPEG if you want to do photo editing. Start shooting in RAW, at least JPEG plus RAW, so that you can get more out of the photo editing software. You're going to be able to bring out more information and finesse your photos much better if you're shooting in RAW. The second thing comes down to resolution. Now, I'm spoiled. I'm a professional photographer, so I'm working with very high megapixel cameras, right? But I, I get it. A lot of you guys are still working with small sensors. But the thing is, when you're photographing things such as birds, wildlife, and you're zooming in, sent so many pictures of birds. But often, the bird represents such a small percentage of the overall frame that by the time you've zoomed in to that actual bird, you're looking at a really reduced resolution picture. So if you want to do anything meaningful with that, like print it out, put it on your wall, even sometimes using it for social media, the resolution just isn't there. So that's why I've actually selected this photo we're working on today. And stay with me till the end of the video because I'm gonna show you a tool that can actually seriously save our bacon. I've used it multiple times for my own work to actually blow up even six megapixel files from way back when and enlarge to span a whole business corridor. So this program is insane at enlargement, so I can't wait to show you. I really think you're gonna like this one, guys. So let's get into Luminar AI and see what I can do with this edit. The first thing I'd recommend you do before you even start working on your photo is just understand the file itself. And to help you do that, you've got this info panel down here that exists inside of the catalog section. So if we open that up, if you don't see it, just click on that eye and we can see that this was shot at ISO 200. So we shouldn't have too much digital noise, too much grain in the file itself, because obviously the lower the ISO is when we shoot the photo, the less noise we have to deal with. So that's pretty cool. We can tell that this was shot on a Canon EOS 6D and hopefully you'll know what camera you're shooting your stuff on. But more importantly, we can see that this is only 2736 pixels wide by 1824 high so that doesn't give us much in the way of pixel real estate if we think about the composition itself we want to make the bird the main feature in this photo so we want to zoom right in we're going to crop in on that and we're going to be disregarding probably about three quarters of this photo maybe even more so that's going to bring us down to a really tiny maybe one one and a half megapixel file by the time we've cropped this bad boy out so at the end of the video i'll show you how we can get around that but for now Let's work on the actual edit itself. If I zoom into the bird itself, and as I said, that's gonna be our key player in the photo. We really wanna be zoomed in on him. We can see that he's relatively sharp. I think we're actually sharper, slightly higher up the branch here. So we possibly missed the, sh the focus point just ever so slightly, but it's no big deal. We can certainly bring some of that detail back using Luminar. So let's get into the edit. The first thing I like to do is grab the Accent AI slider inside of Enhance AI and just crank that up and see what it does. And straight away, I'm seeing that we're certainly brightening everything up. We're certainly increasing a lot more saturation. And while these tools are acting on a global sense, as in we're changing the whole picture with that slider, I actually like to analyze the photo incrementally. Like I look at individual parts and components. So I'm looking at the branch, I'm looking at the bird, and I'm assessing what this tool is doing to the bird and the branch separately from what it's doing to the background. So if I toggle that off, and I toggle it on, you can see that it definitely looks better for these elements, but I just feel like it's just boosting up the brightness and vibrancy of that background far too much. So that's where our masking comes in. And if we just click on the add mask button here and we select the paintbrush, basically we can just start painting in this effect only where we want it. So I'm going to come up to the top of the branch here and I'm gonna do one stroke down there and you will see that I actually changed my opacity to 25%. So basically what I'm gonna do is as I paint over the elements, I'm just increasing the amount of that effect by 25% each time I paint over it. And so by doing that, I can basically paint over this bird a couple of times, uh, three times now, so I'm about 75% that effect that we created. I've done one stroke over the branch, so that gave us a 25% of the effect over the branch. And now if I do one more stroke just through that sort of center part there, we're 
building that up to around 50%. And finally, I'm just going to go over this bird just a little bit more. And if you feel like you've bled over the edge just a little bit here, like this little bit of green around his head there, you can come in, grab the eraser tool, maybe crank the opacity slightly higher just so we can get it done a bit quicker. And you can come in and just be a little bit more refined. I'm being pretty rough and ready with this just for the sake of doing this quickly for the tutorial, but you can get as refined as you want with your masking. And there we go, we've removed it from there. So now we can toggle this effect off and then put it back on and we can see how the enhanced AI is just only affecting the bird and the branch. One of the things that I like to do when I'm working on any photo is I look for problem areas. I look for things in the photo that are gonna distract the viewer's eye that don't really add anything to the scene itself. And if you take them away, are they actually gonna be missed? And if the answer is no, then there's no problem getting rid of them. So as an example of that, you see this little bright spot here, this little bokeh area here, where we've obviously got a little speck of light behind out of focus from the camera and that's just grabbing my attention. I have a lot more of those areas around the edge of the frame as well, but I'm really not concerned about those ones. It's just these kind of areas that are gonna be visible when I crop the photo in. Um, and talking of that, why don't we just crop that right now so that we can get a better composition and actually see what we're dealing with. And as I sort of alluded to, I really wanna come in much closer to this bird. Now we could either put him right in the center like this, we could move this over and have him on one of the third lines here and have a lot of negative space over to the right, or we could push him over this side and have negative space to the left. I think that really comes down to personal preference. And if this top left-hand corner here wasn't so busy with different things and different colors going on, I'd probably leave that, but I'm thinking maybe here might be a better crop for us. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. And now I have cropped our photo down. You can already see that pixelation creeping in. So if we want to print this out, it's basically a non-starter without a particular tool that I will show you towards the end of the video that's actually gonna really save our base here but for now I'm gonna get rid of this little light spot here that I was telling you about before maybe just reduce these two here so how are we gonna do that let's come down to the professional section here and we're gonna select the clone tool and as the little dialog box here is suggesting we basically click to select a new source so I can sample from here and I can paint it over the top of here but rather than doing it at 100% I think I'm just gonna start at 50 click and start painting so that we can still have a hint of that light ball but perhaps not with its full intensity and then we can do the same for the other two just in the background there as well we can just steal a little bit of green from elsewhere and just dull those down just a little bit because we really want the bird to be the key feature and we want him to pop and so if we have distracting elements that's just going to compete with our attention so i'm also going to sample from here and just get rid of this little bottom bit here. You can really get carried away with this as I may well do here. So I'm just gonna um, just retouch just a couple of these bits over here, just from stealing from some darker areas, perhaps just that bit there. So let's have a quick look at our before and our after. You can see that we've just minimized those bright spots and now the key player, the bird, grabs much more of our attention in the frame. Okay, let's carry on with the edit. Let's jump into the light section. And I think the color balance is pretty good, but we may just be edging on the side of green here. So we could just push that towards the magenta a little bit. Now, while the exposure is okay, I'm just gonna brighten things up just a little bit because I'm actually gonna use the vignette tool later just to, again, focus our attention here and darken down those areas around him. So I'm not worried about the rest of the photo getting too bright, but I do want to introduce a little bit more detail on our bird. I'm gonna get the smart contrast, just to add a little bit of that, just for a little bit more impact. Have a little play with the highlight slider, but I don't feel like that's doing too much for us. And the shadow slider, I just bump that up just a little bit. And before I go any further, I'm just gonna, again, click the eyeball tool, just so I can see where I've come from, where I've got to. Okay, and I feel like we're much brighter, heading in a good direction, birds starting to look good. Let's press on. Next tool we're gonna to look at is Structure AI because he's got all this lovely feathering on his chest here, around his face. We've got a lot of detail on the branch here. And if we use the Structure AI tool, and I push that, let's say, all the way to 100 and be really aggressive, 
far too much. And as I said before, it affects the whole photo globally. And that's not what we want to do. Whenever you're playing with any of these tools, any of these sliders, don't just consider it as whether it's a yes, I want this, no, I don't, or a certain percentage. Think where in the photo might I want to apply this? And I think that again, we can add some of this to bring out detail in his feather, maybe in his face, and a little bit on the branch, similar to what we did with the Enhance AI. So let's do that. Let's grab the mask tool. And this time I'm going to set that, I don't know, 38%. That's fine. And I'm just going to start painting. I've gone way over the, um, the branch there. No excuses for doing that because I am using a Wacom tablet at the moment. Uh, so it should be nice and precise. I'm not going to worry too much about that. And I'm just reducing the size of the brush there just to paint a little bit more refinely on this guy and maybe another little streak just down there. Okay, and we'll just toggle the palette off and toggle it on, off and on. And I just feel like the branch itself is just getting a little bit too crunchy. So what we're gonna do is come back to that mask tool, come to the eraser. I'm gonna use the right bracket key to increase the size of my brush here. And I'm just gonna remove some of that effect from the actual branch itself because yes, the branch is interesting, but it's certainly a secondary player in the overall photo. Now, the next thing I'm thinking of doing is very much personal preference. I'm gonna come into the color section and I feel like the greens are getting far too vibrant. They're just getting away on us a little bit, but you may like the combination of the yellow and the green, and that's absolutely fine. But for me, I find that the green is competing with the nice yellow that we have here on the bird. And so what I'm gonna do is rather than just come in and reduce the overall saturation, which is obviously gonna desaturate our whole photo, or grab the vibrance and bring that down. What I'm gonna do is actually come into the HSL, which as you know, stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. And now we can control the colors individually. So I can come into the greens, and if I grab this and start wiggling that around, you can see that we are affecting the color, the hue of the greens. So one option we have is we could actually try and harmonize the background so that it matches our bird a little better. And that's not a bad idea. We could kind of push it towards that direction, but we can also come into the saturation itself and just bring that down so that it's not quite as vibrant and in your face. By the same token, we can grab the yellow slider and actually boost that up. We come to the luminance section and just see whether we can, oh yeah, look at that. That's really great because as we push the luminance of the yellow up, that's actually bringing out the detail in the chest here. Sure, we're getting a little bit overexposed just on this little patch here, but I think there's a way that I can actually deal with that using the local masks, so we can certainly come to that. Now, before we move on from the luminance section, I just wanna see whether I can just control those greens a little bit. Look, if I take it all the way to the left, obviously that's really nasty, really ugly, and not what we want to do, but you can see how we can isolate and make our subject pop from the background. So rather than being aggressive like that and going, well, that's really ugly and far too much, what we can do is just utilize some of that. So we can just be really subtle and just bring that down to minus 13. Here's our before, here's our after. Okay, we're really coming along with this and I've changed my mind on this. I've done a bit of a U-turn. I'm gonna come back to the saturation and I desaturated those greens. I'm not gonna go quite as heavily with that. And one thing I did, which I'm gonna actually just put back is just move those greens back towards a proper green hue rather than the yellows. I think it was better when we had the combination of yellow plus green rather than just pushing it all towards a yellow palette. That contrast of color just helps our bird pop as well. So here's our before, here's our after. All right, not looking too bad. The next thing I'm going to do is just zoom into 200% and bring our bird to the middle and I'm gonna sharpen the image. So if I come into the detail section here, what I would recommend you do whenever you're trying to sharpen your image is, of course, the sharpen slider itself is gonna do a fantastic job. I'm very impressed with Luminar AI's sharpen tool just on its own, just uh, without any ad other adjustments. But if you want to use the small, medium and large details, what I recommend you do is actually just grab just one at a time, push it all the way to 100 and have a look at what it's doing to your image. You can double click it to reset it and then go for the next one. What about medium? Okay, not too bad and go for large. And I don't really think that one's doing too much for us. I actually like what the small details was doing and also the medium details as well. So if I toggle that off and I toggle it on, certainly helping us a little bit. And now we can just push in some of that sharpness as well. And if I toggle this off, 
and I toggle it on, you can see that the majority of sharpening is happening where we want it, which is on the branch and on the bird itself. But we are sharpening up some of this noise, some of this grain in the background. So as I toggle that off and on, you can just see it just pops it out a little bit. We don't really want that. So once again, just grab a mask. We can paint over our bird. I'm going to push it all the way to 100. Be pretty aggressive with this. Say, please sharpen up our bird quite a lot. Now I'm going to drop it down to 50% and that's going to allow me to say, okay, now just sharpen up the branch, but not as much as the bird, just do it 50%. And if I turn the palette off and on, we now have a much more refined sharpening going on. Okay, let's jump into the vignette section. First of all, let's uh, let's put this to screen again. We're going to go to vignette. Now, one thing you could do if you wanted to is actually uh, push the amount to positive 100. Now, normally I'm always taking my vignette to the left-hand side, but if you want to, you could do it uh, for an artistic effect. Push it to 100. You could play with the size, so you could create quite an artistic little card that you might send to people, or even a very small 6x4 print this would work quite nicely for. But we're going to stick to uh, a photo rather than that sort of artistic interpretation. So what I'm going to do is just push that amount down and to the left. We're going to choose the subject, and we're going to say, let the subject be the bird here. Toggle it on. Again, it's subtle, but it's just helping to bring our eye towards the bird. Now, through my editing so far, one of the things I've done is actually just overcook his chest here just a little bit. And so what we can do is actually come into a local mask, and what we're going to do is darken just this area down. So I want to add a basic local mask. And what I want to do is play with these sliders until I can see that this area here brings back the detail. And so I'm going to bring the exposure down, perhaps bring the contrast away. So there's less contrast in there. That might help us. And it does. And we've got a very saturated yellow. So actually by taking the warmth slider towards the blue on the left hand side here, that's actually helping that. Now, the fact that I'm destroying the rest of my picture at the moment, I really don't care. That's not what I'm interested in. I'm only interested in that little highlight on the bird's chest. We might also just want to bring the saturation of that area down just a little bit as well. OK, look, I'm going to go with that. It's not perfect, but uh, it's going to work for what we're after. And I'm just using my left bracket key just to bring the size of that down. And I'm just going to paint once there and just one more little paint there. And you can see what was that little hot spot. If I toggle that off and toggle it on, we've just taken care of that. Now you guys are probably familiar with the Portrait Bokeh AI tool and I know that a frustration for some people is that it only works on humans at the moment. We may see the improvement of that AI over time but currently just humans. So is there something else we could do to blur the background and leave our attention on the bird rather than using a human? So let's go to basic and in this local mask what I'm going to do is grab the structure AI. Now if I push this all the way to 100 as you can see all the local contrast gets increased, everything gets real crunchy and gritty, and it's not really the look we're after. But what if we went the opposite way? As I've pushed that to the left, we've effectively blurred the background. So whether we want that much, uh, that's debatable, but what we could do is utilize that to blur more around the edges and then reduce the effect as we get closer to the bird. So a good way to do that, rather than just painting a mask as we've done in the past, we can actually grab a radial mask, so a round mask, and that's gonna allow us to click on a center point and drag out from there, and so, what we've got going on here in the center circle, we have zero of the effect that we just created. So bringing that structure AI down to negative 100, that's not doing anything here. It's only affecting at 100% outside this outer circle. What's going on between this radius here around the center point and the outer bit? Well, this is our transition point. So from none of the effect, to 100% of the effect, we have a smooth transition between the two. And you can see that as we progress towards the outer circle, we get more and more blurry. And so that's up to us how tight we make that um, transition, how soft we make it. We can just grab that and pull it around. We can uh, move this around, but as long as we're over the bird, I'm happy. We could also further enhance the vignette effect by actually darkening that background down a little bit. So obviously, if you take something really far, you can have a really extreme effect. And sometimes it's good to do that just to see exactly what a tool is doing. And then once you know what the effect is, you can then bring it back and ease it to a point that you feel looks a little bit more natural, almost unnoticeable. Right, let's have a look at where we've come from. 
and where we've got to. Okay, this is where we started. This is where we've got to. We could absolutely do more with this. We could jump in and we could get into some of these creative tools. Like I often quite like playing around with the mystical filter, um, particularly if you've sharpened things up quite a bit because the mystical filter almost does the opposite of that in a really nice kind of dreamy way. If I push that to 100, you can see it just kind of blends and smooths the colors together, but does it in a what I find quite a nice pleasing way. So let's put some of that in. Here's our before, here's our after. If you want to give the overall photo more cohesion from a color palette perspective, a really good way to do that is to come into the mood section. So for example, you can just come in here and start mousing over these and just see if there's one of these that just kind of floats your boat. Um, so I don't know, for example, let's go for wooden. And if we toggle out before, and our after, you can see that the color palette has just become a little more harmonized. And the reason for that is if I push the amount all the way to 100, you can see that basically the mood tool is applying a color lookup table, something borrowed from the movie industry. It's very clever stuff, but basically it really remaps the colors that exist in your photo to another color scheme. You can see that we've introduced more of a wooden color scheme. And then the amount at 100, I would never recommend that, but for sure, you can just ease a little bit of this in. And I think the default is 30, and that's normally a pretty good place to be. So look, here we are at 35. Here's our before, everything's looking a little flat, the colors aren't particularly vibrant and the bird is definitely competing against the background and when I release that bammo the bird sings visually speaking and perhaps literally as well at the time but if we feel like we've gone just a little bit too far like I feel like we're bleaching out on some of the whites on the actual branch that he's sitting on just a little bit what we can do is come down to our my template which is what we've created through this edit and we can just grab the amount slider and just ease that back a little bit because it's very easy using all of these tools and when you compound one on top of the other it's very easy to quickly take your edit too far i think that's a little more tastefully done it's not so in your face let's call that a day for our edit inside of luminar ai and let's have a quick look at our before and our after So the tool I'm going to show you now is called Gigapixel AI. It's brought to us by Topaz Labs. It's absolutely amazing. Normally when photo editing software enlarges our photos, it's basically taking those square pixels and just stretching them. And then it smears the edges of them together. And normally the results aren't very good at all. Basically, you've just made the squares that it was made up of bigger squares. Gigapixel does it differently. It's got artificial intelligence built into it that creates some absolutely amazing results. I don't know exactly how it does it. It's, it's pretty mind blowing. Best thing is I show you and it's really easy to do. So in order for us to do anything with this photo now, we need to get it out of Luminar. We need to export it. So come to the export tab. We're gonna go save photo to disk and I'm gonna call it something more meaningful. I want to export as a JPEG. I'm not going to sharpen because all that's gonna do is draw attention to those pixels that this picture's made up of. And I'm also not going to come in and change the dimensions because if I make the photo bigger here, all Luminar is gonna do is spit out a bigger version and just stretch, basically smear the pixels to increase the size of the photo. And that's not what we want either. That's just gonna result in a big blurry file. So let me hit the export and I'll show you what we can do about it. So so let's load up Gigapixel. All I need to do is come to browse, select the photo we were just working on before. Let's have a look at our bird here. And what this AI driven software has created for us here on the right, blown up from the original very pixelated version on the left hand side. The calculations and computations that have been done by the AI to actually create this version on the right hand side here, that's all done automatically. All we have to do is just select an AI model that we want it to use and usually the standard does a really, really good job. We can see in the bottom bit here, we've got a 15 by 10 inch file here that we could print out. We can go bigger than that. That's just a three times increase. You can go up to six times. If you're working on a low resolution camera or you're regularly needing to zoom in like I did 
did in this example on this bird here. This piece of software is absolutely invaluable. I've been using it for a couple of years now really successfully to increase the size, the print resolution of some of my smaller files that businesses and offices want to put onto their walls. I'm not going to go into all the details around this program in this particular video. I think the results on the left to the right, they speak for themselves. This is insane. If you want to get hold of this, I've got a link in the description below. That's an affiliate link. So I get a really small commission off that link. It doesn't cost you guys any more. So I'd really appreciate it if you like the look of this or even just want to check it out. Just use that link. Helps me out. We can just come to save image and we're going to have an amazing result. You guys know that I love a clever bit of technology almost as much as I love photo editing. So what Gigapixel AI is able to do, I think is super cool. If you guys would like me to make a video dedicated just to Gigapixel and how you actually use that, get the most out of it, just write Gigapixel in the comments below. I've got that link as I say, so help me out, use that link if you're interested or even just use it, just go and check it out. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. There's another one popping up on the screen now that I think you'll enjoy as well. Cheers, I'll see you in that one.